Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad, and this is gonna be a really brief tutorial on how to unstick a stuck transaction in MetaMask. This happens to everyone. Uh, it's happened to me many times, and it continues to happen to me, uh, not because I don't know how to set the gap, gas price, but it's because of the fact that these gas prices, which you can think of them as a way to bid on uh, ensuring that your transaction gets confirmed on the Ethereum blockchain. So the higher the gas price, the more likely it is to get confirmed. And because this all sort of works like an auction, uh, it means that these prices can go up if more and more people are bidding and willing to pay higher prices. It also means that it'll come down when folks say, screw this, I'm just gonna set this out and I'm not going to bid higher prices and I'm gonna wait until they come back down. So this is the ETH gas station and this is where I normally come to see what is the average gas price that people are bidding and it gives me this nice range. So uh, this is at the higher end. I know that the transaction will most definitely go through if I put it at 480 or higher, which is incredibly high. Um, if you've never looked at this or thought about it, gas prices six months ago were well under 30 guay. So the fact that these gas prices are really high is one of the like most uh, confident indicators that we are dealing with lots of growth and lots of demand for people to use Ethereum. And then um, in the middle here is, is sort of the sweet spot. So this is where I normally set my gas price, whatever this recommends, or I will set it between what is the standard less than five minute recommendation time versus what would get my transaction through in less than 30 minutes. So in this example, I would probably set the gas price around 450, but I'm always refreshing this right before I hit confirm to see if the numbers change. And yeah, they look like they didn't change. So yeah, 450 would probably work for me. If my gas price though is set below this number, I could get stuck. And you can think of it as simply as uh, if the gas price is, is too cheap, then the miners aren't willing to uh, include my transaction in a block. And that is not good because then it means that I have a pending transaction, which means it's stuck. It doesn't mean that my funds aren't safe. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna you know, lose the money that was a part of that transaction. It means that I'm gonna have to wait until gas prices come back down to around 440 or lower so that my transaction gets confirmed. Alternatively though, what I'm gonna show you is if I'm in a hurry and, and I realize, you know, shit, I just put this thing through, I set the wrong gas price and I really need to get this done because I need to do another transaction after it, I can do what's called dropping and replacing the transaction. So that's what I'm gonna show you here and we'll run through a quick example and, and hopefully cover all of the, uh, the details and frequently asked questions that come up. Okay, so let's do an example with Uniswap. So I'm gonna trade some ether for the uh, MCB token, which is the governance token for Monte Carlo DEX. So if I go here and if I'm gonna put in one ether, I'm going to get about 112 MCB. And when I go to swap, uh, because I'm trading Ether, uh, one of the first things that's worth pointing out is you might have never noticed this, but when you are sending or uh, depositing, staking, doing whatever with Ether, it only requires a single transaction in almost all instances. And that's because Ether is the native token of Ethereum and I don't have to ask permission. Uh, I don't have to be asked permission to spend that Ether. It's something that I'm just able to do because it's, again, it's the native token of Ethereum. So if I were to hit swap,
here's my confirmation. And this is going to be a single confirmation because remember, I'm starting with Ether. So uh, I don't have to give approval to spend an ERC-20 token like DAI. It's just Ether, uh, which is great because it saves me money uh, instead of having to work with multiple transactions. It's just one. But let's go ahead and set the gas price well below uh, what it would take to execute this. It's showing that if the gas price is somewhere between 480 and 440, it will likely go through in less than 30 minutes. So let's go back to Uniswap and take a look at that transaction. I'm gonna set it much lower. So I'm setting that at 20 GUE, which is going to then reflect in my gas fee. So it drops from like what, $38, $37 down to $1.63. And then let's go ahead and hit confirm. All right, so Etherscan is showing me that the estimated time to confirmation is uh, two hours and nine minutes, which uh, is funny because I think there's zero chance in hell that this will go through in two hours and nine minutes because the gas price I set is so incredibly low at 20 GUE. So if it's at only 20 GUE, this then leads me to realize that I'm stuck. So let's fast forward uh, 24 hours and I'm really getting frustrated and worried, like what the heck, you know, I, I, I have other things I wanna do with other DeFi applications. If I click here on my wallet address, um, I can see that I'm stuck here still. So pending, uh, is, is what tells me that the transaction is stuck. Uh, normally, uh, my transaction would be pending, but it would you know, be pending for hopefully less than 30 minutes, uh, at worst a few hours, if I have to wait longer because the gas price was close, but just a little bit too low. But here I'm completely stuck. All right, so what we're gonna do is go back to MetaMask and we're gonna send a zero ether uh, transaction. So it's basically just a dummy transaction, but we're gonna match it to the nonce of the transaction that is stuck. So actually, let's go back here, click on the transaction hash, which by the way, the transaction hash is just, it's a unique ID that uh, represents this transaction between my wallet and Uniswap. And so I scroll down, I click on click to see more, and then I see that the nonce, which is basically just a number, and they're numbers that run in order. The transaction before this was 256, this one's 257, and so on. So it's 257. I'm gonna send a dummy transaction, and I'm gonna put in 257 to ensure that this one gets knocked out. So I'll go ahead and click send. So this is, this is me sending from defidad.eth, but I'm actually sending to defidad.eth. So just you know, be careful that you understand that you are not only sending a zero ether transaction, but I am sending that from one wallet, the one that is stuck. It has to be the wallet that it has the stuck transaction and I'm sending it to uh, the same wallet that has the stuck transaction. So I go here and I know that the ETH uh, gas station was telling me that it needs to be around 480 or higher. So 480 GUE. So I'm gonna set the gas price at 485 to make sure it goes through as quickly as possible. I don't have to worry about the gas limit Again, this is a zero ether transaction. It's being sent from the wallet that has a stuck transaction to the same wallet address that I am sending from. And then this is where I change the nonce. If you don't have this available in MetaMask, you can go to uh, up in the top right-hand corner normally, there's the little colorful icon. Click on that 
then click on settings, click on advanced, and then under advanced, look for uh, custom nonce. And it'll allow you then to have this uh, more powerful feature. So I need this to match 257. And then that's it. So I've got the, the custom nonce, uh, instead of it being 258, this would have automatically made the nonce 258 because it's the next transaction after it, but I'm gonna match it to the one that's stuck. And if I had multiple stuck transactions, I need to choose the lowest number possible. So let's pretend that I, I screwed up and now I've got two stuck transactions look at both of them, figure out which one has the lower custom nonce or the lower nonce, the number. And once you figure that out, put in the lower number between the two of them. Uh, so I'm gonna use 257, 45 guay, we're all set to go. And uh, it's gonna cost me $4.85 in total. I think it's a pretty good deal compared to sitting around any longer and being worried about this. Uh, and then you can see up above that I'm sending from defidad.eth to defidad.eth and it's zero ether. All right, we're back like 60 seconds later and my, my dummy transaction has gone through. So you can see I sent zero ether. I sent it from my wallet to my wallet. It cost me $4.85, which is about 0.01 ether. And you can see that the transaction number is 257. So that is how I was able to, to cancel and drop the other transaction. If we go back to that original transaction, let's go ahead and hit refresh. Now it has been dropped and replaced. So uh, this transaction basically never existed now for me. Uh, I, I don't recall exactly why someone once explained this to me, but um, this transaction cost here, this is not something that I actually paid. Uh, the transaction cost that I did pay is on the, the one that went through that was confirmed. Um, so I did pay $4.85, but the original one that had the uh, gas price set at 20 guay. This is not a cost that I actually incurred. So anyways, that's how easy it is to do. I, I never wait long for my transactions to go through because if I see my transaction is not going through after about 30 minutes, I normally go here to the gas station and I just hit refresh to see what's going on. And if I see that the gas price Let's pretend the, the gas prices here have moved up to uh, 500. This lower number, let's pretend is at 500. If the gas price I set was at 440, that's why my transaction isn't going through. And it's gonna be stuck until this ETH gas station shows me that gas prices have dropped. So it's not a guessing game. It's just a matter of being able to uh, figure out what is the going rate of gas uh, or the gas price on Ethereum. So before I go, uh, there are a few risks that I can think of. They're mostly uh, human error that could come up. Let's pretend that I am going to send that transaction, the, the dummy transaction to myself please make sure that when you hit send that you use the option to transfer between wallet addresses. Um, and even so, I'm, I'm always very careful unless you know, you're someone that uses MetaMask all the time, like myself, and I, I've, I've done this so many times, I know that it works flawlessly. Um, it's important to just double check and make sure, am I sending from the wallet that has the stuck transaction and am I sending it to myself in the same wallet uh, with the same uh, Ethereum wallet address? And am I also sending uh, a zero ether uh, transaction? So just do yourself a favor and you know stick to the simplest, easiest 
ability to uh, to drop and replace this transaction. Another problem I could see running into is uh, let's pretend that gas prices are going up like they were today. They just kept going up. They started, you know, below let's say 300. And even though I'm coming back to fix a stuck transaction, let's say I get unlucky a second time. I check the ETH gas station. I set it at 490. Suddenly after I set this at 490, the gas prices jump well above 490. Now I've got two stuck transactions. No problem. Uh, it just means that I need to go back one more time and I need to find between the two transactions, what is the lower nonce number? You know, if I were to click uh, next here, I go back and I look for what is the lower uh, uh, transaction number between the two. So if we go here, that was found by, actually, let's see if we have it here. Uh, it, here we go, it's always hidden. So click to see more and then you can find it right here under nonce. So if I have two stuck transactions and one is 257 and the other one is 258, it means that I have to unstick 257 first and then I need to do another transaction to unstick the second one do the exact same thing, dummy transaction, but match it to 258. That's, that's how easy it is, but yet how like important it is that I understand the, the sequential order of, of the two transactions. Otherwise, if I keep trying to unstick 258 and 257 is the one that's also stuck, I'm just stacking stuck transactions now because they all, these transactions confirm an order and 257 hasn't confirmed and 258, 259, 260 and so on are all sitting there waiting for this 257 to unclog. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you find this helpful. I know gas prices can be frustrating, but uh, having a stuck transaction is, is really kind of a, a rite of passage uh, if you've used Ethereum. And it's pretty unsettling the first time it happens. I, I do remember thinking that like I had lost my funds, but they're not. It's just because uh, the transaction is stuck and it just requires you to do uh, a process like this to unstick it, or you can just be really patient and wait for it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at defydad.com and please feel free to ask questions in the YouTube comments or you can follow me at defy underscore dad on Twitter and I'll do my best to answer your questions there. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.